some of these stories sometimes are just way too overwhelming to think about. This woman right here was locked up in a jail cell for 43 years. That's 43 Christmases she missed, 43 Thanksgivings, at least 43 or way more birthdays, anniversaries, funerals. She missed them all because she was wrongly charged and wrongly convicted. And wait till you hear who is most likely guilty. Murder conviction of Missouri woman overturned after 43 freaking years in prison. Prison term of Sandy Hemi, 63, longest known wrongful conviction of a woman in U.S. history. A Missouri woman who is in prison for more than 40 years for murder has had her conviction overturned after a judge found clear and convincing evidence that she was innocent of the killing in question. Sandy Hemi, 63, was convicted of and sentenced to life imprisonment for... The 1980 slaying of Patricia Jeschke, a library worker in St. Joseph, Missouri, after Hemi made statements to the police incriminating herself while she was a psychiatric patient under psychiatric drugs. So they were basically the cops were taking advantage of her and her weakened position and they manipulated her into giving the answers that they wanted. But wait till you hear why they wanted her her convicted and not the actual killer. On Friday, Livingston County Circuit Judge Ryan Horseman ruled that evidence directly ties the killings of Jeschke to a local what? Police officer? Say it ain't so. Who later went to prison for another crime and has since died. Hemi, who has spent the last 43 years behind bars, must be freed within 30 days unless prosecutors decide to try her, the judge said. Why would you have to wait three days? If I was the judge, I'd be like, find the key, go to the prison cell, open the door, and let Miss Hemi out because she is absolutely innocent. It says the ruling came after an evidentiary hearing in January where Hemi's legal team presented arguments supporting her evidence. Hemi's prison term marks the longest known wrongful conviction of a woman in U.S. history. It says we are grateful to the court for acknowledging the grave injustice Miss Hemi has endured for more than four decades. Hemi initially pleaded guilty to capital murder in exchange for avoiding the death penalty, but her conviction was thrown out on appeal. She was convicted again in 1985 after a one-day trial in which the only evidence against her was her confession. In a 147-page petition seeking her exoneration, attorneys argued that authorities ignored Hemi's, quote, wildly contradictory and factually impossible statements while she was a patient at a psychiatric hospital. Hemi, then 20, was receiving treatment for auditory hallucinations, derealization, and drug use when she was targeted, targeted by the police, you say? No, that didn't happen back then. That hasn't happened since then, and that's not happening now, is it? She had spent most of her life beginning from age 12 in inpatient psychiatric treatment. Over a series of hour-long interviews, Hemi gave conflicting statements about the murder while being treated with antipsychotic drugs. At some point, says her attorneys, she was so heavily medicated that she was unable even to hold up her head and was restrained and strapped to a chair. Detectives noted that Hemi seemed mentally confused and not able to fully comprehend their questions, but we're definitely going to use her answers and submit them in court, charge her with what she confessed to, and then throw her in jail. But, you know, there's something wrong here. She doesn't seem fully able to comprehend our questions. Steve Houston, a retired St. Joseph Police Department detective, testified that he stopped one of the interviews because, quote, she didn't seem totally coherent. Police, quote, exploited her mental illness and coerced her into making false statements while she was sedated and being treated with antipsychotic medication. They alleged that authorities at the time suppressed evidence that implicated Michael Holman, then a 22-year-old police officer who had tried to use the victim's credit card. It was like 600 and something bucks that he was using on the day of her murder. 
Holman's truck was spotted near the crime scene and a pair of earrings identified by Jeske's father were found in Holman. That's the cop's possession. Holman had been a suspect and was questioned at the time. Many of the details uncovered during the investigation into Holman were never given to Hemi's attorneys. So it was a cover up from the start to the finish for 43 freaking years. Holman was investigated for insurance fraud and burglaries and spent some time in prison. He died in 2015, escaping the long arm of the law. In his ruling on Friday, Horseman, that's the judge, wrote that, quote, no evidence whatsoever outside of Miss Hemi's unreliable statements connects her to the crime, adding that those statements had been, quote, taken while she was in psychiatric crisis and physical pain. Why didn't the judge back then 40 years ago figure that out? In contrast, says the judge, this court finds that the evidence directly ties Holman to this crime and murder scene. He said prosecutors had failed to disclose evidence that would have helped Hemi's defense and that her trial counsel had fallen, quote, below professional standards. In my opinion, there's some people that need to go to jail here. The Missouri Attorney General's office, which fought to uphold her conviction, did not immediately comment on the judge's ruling. Uh, really? Uh, you wanted to continue upholding a conviction when it looks like, according to the judge's own opinion, that the crime was committed by the police officer and the police department who framed Hemi to cover up Holman, the officer's crime. Guys, nothing has changed. The thin blue line, this thin blue line wall of silence was intact then and it's intact now. That thin blue line is a division that draws the line between the haves that's the cops and the have nots. That's us. And qualified immunity absolutely has to end. It's, it's pitiful that this lady right here spent four decades, more than four decades in jail and that she's going to have to spend another 30 days till they can figure out what's going on in jail. Talk about insult to injury. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, grab a hard-hitting conversation starting design you can put on a shirt, hoodie, mug, hat, cell phone case, pillowcase, whatever you want. Become a channel member, but more importantly, hold cops accountable. Always film the police. It is your insurance policy, your portable courtroom, and your portable judge. I will see you in the next video. I'm